Hello, and let me just check this here. <clears throat> So, hello, welcome to um, just a little snuff video here. I'm in uh, Morecambe. I've got two cameras set up now just for capturing everything that goes on on this stream. Uh, we're on dial-up right now because uh, there's no Wi-Fi in Morecambe, Lancashire, uh, due to it being about 50 years behind in terms of technology compared to the rest of the UK and uh, even probably the poorest African nations. Um but hopefully that will improve, especially with the Eden Project, which will, you know, I think probably Eden Project will solve all problems in that area of the country. Um, any, you know, problems with homeless people, drugs, alcoholism, poverty, the Eden Project is coming. So uh, let's just uh, look forward to that with open arms. So just... Put the snuff camera on for you there again. This is full going full snuff tonight. And uh, thank you to Mr. Simpkins, Mr. Backhouse, Mr. Paul, Nathan, and of course, Trapped in Plastic, uh, Millie Moo, as she's known in the Twin Peaks world. Um, or... Mod uh, mod pie, as opposed to she. Uh, I did suggest the name hair pie for the uh, channel because a lot of her dolls are very you know showcasing good hairstyles etc. But she's stuck with mod pie for her creations and the latest one in the uh, the art issue of. The Blue Rose is uh, a picture of, well, there's a photograph of her um, Pete Martel. I love the doll and the pose and the background. It's all great. Josh really should have had something in here that he created to do with Twin Peaks, I suppose. Michael Horse's map there. It's, you can buy these apparently, printed out and uh, signed. <clears throat> Very fast postage, postage for the uh, for the magazine. I must say, came within a week. So I like this new one. You know, it's got a lot of variety in terms of the art. Uh, in terms of the news, Millie, I would say it's the video just before this, the one I did last night in the middle of the night. I got up, you know, and heard an, uh, an owl hooting out the back of, uh, well, I'm, you know, I'm staying in a sort of small flat above Pop World at the moment, and it was 4 a.m., and I just thought, blimey, I really went to bed early last night after EastEnders, what's happening, you know? And there was just this feeling inside of me that after so long, uh, the passion for Twin Peaks and, and its world had really subsided, I would say, or was just like a residue at the, in the pit of my stomach or something beneath, uh, you know, a Frey Bantos pie that I'd just had. And uh, suddenly, you know, many, many months later, probably more than over a year this has been happening, I suddenly just felt enlivened and as if some kind of um, primordial spirit had 
taken over me and come inside me even. I don't know if it was being in the fresh air of Morecambe and uh, the fresh air there when you get out onto the the prom and you you know you're holding the barrel balustrades of the uh, the metal supports that go down to the beach and everything it really is pretty wonderful especially in November and you know last night was actually here Guy Fawkes night where we celebrate a uh, religious fanatic trying to blow up the Houses of Parliament. So uh, that's been ongoing tonight because obviously tonight is a Saturday so more people have time now to to blow things up and uh, celebrate blowing Parliament up. Um, so anyway, I, I made a video basically of me talking about things I had picked up on from Reddit uh, which led me to believe that there's more going on out there, you know, just beyond the the four walls that we inhabit or the, you know, the world that we're in. Um, and that, that, you know, that the Twin Peaks story is not actually over, it, that more is coming and it's actually being created right now as in undercover so it seemed suitable that i was actually doing this video under the cover of night and you know i was trying to speak quite quietly on the video and, and actually doing it as an asmr video at the start just whispering into my mic but um then you know i realized my voice was quite loud and i had one of my neighbors from next door who works at Rolls Royce, you know, he shouted, shut the fuck up. No one gives a shit about your Twin Peaks bullshit. You complete asshole. Why don't you just get a life and just stop going on about this shit. You'd be better off if you're obsessed with, you know, only fools and horses or something. And I said, yeah, maybe you're right. I said to through the wall to him. And thank you for what you said, just said. I hope you can go back to sleep after my interruption. Um, and I said, how about Last of the Summer Wine? And he said, you're fucking pushing it now. There is a, there is impacting on the sleeping, but I will say actually, Millie, it's making sleeping almost too easy. Like the dreams I'm having at the moment are just so, so, so deep and so penetrating into my very kind of annals of the annals of my mind, really. Um, the corridors and just, it's like a labyrinth in there. But when you get in there and when you start sleeping, you know, it's, it's difficult to get out. So... Thank you for Starlink. Is that a uh, internet provider, Richard? I don't know, but it's something I'll have to look into. Thank you. Um, thanks again for everyone tuning in tonight. And remember uh, to subscribe. Please ring the bell on YouTube. I want to get as many people involved at the moment with this new news. And, you know, I think that things will happen. Um, of course, we're all awaiting the release of Queen of Hearts. Cameron's film and keeping people interested in that is something I want to do in different ways but we don't know if it's going to actually be released uh, by December you know so it's pretty much ready apparently apart from the the special effects so um, all I heard is that Millie is doing some kind of um, like a puppet show with hand puppets for a sequence in it. So um, that lasts about, actually that takes up about 90 minutes of the film, which will be just obviously, that's about one sixth of the entirety of the film. So it will be obviously a relatively large part of it, but not the entire film. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Um, 
Uh, thank you. I just had Jeremy Lindholm, uh, aka star of Twin Peaks: The Return, like this video. Um, just uh, surprised those pages aren't stuck yet. Says Nathan. Mm -hmm. It's not like some kind of porn magazine. It's actually a serious magazine about Twin Peaks, the Blue Rose. And I don't think, you know, its creators or the people involved in it, like Millie, would appreciate you suggesting it's like, you know, the 80s porn magazine from the UK called Razzle or uh, Mayfair, uh, which is Mayfair was more of a classy one, really. So there's no bush in it or anything like that. Um, so, yes, as Trip Millie says, it's edited. So, um, I'm not sure if she means they've edited her model or of Pete, or they've edited it because there was some bush featured in one of her dolls, but doesn't it, it's not up to you to tell me when it's enough of that, Josh. Just remember that, please. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I've uh, gone onto the wrong screen now. Um, Hello, Gary. What's laying? Basically, um, this is a follow on video from yesterday. I've had many uh, contacts on Instagram, etc., just writing to me, including basically, you know, I woke up uh, later in the morning. I'd got um, phone calls just absolutely going through the roof with my phone. Um, the fax machine was on fire, not literally. I mean, I'd, but I was out of paper because there were so many faxes coming in from places like America, um, Hindustan, uh, the outer Mongolia, Canada, and other third world countries. Um, so a lot of interest from people who were interested in my rumor about Twin Peaks, which centered on uh, Lynch being seen at the start of September in Snoqualmie and someone quadrupled down on that. They didn't just say, you know, it's, it's sure. Oh, is it sure? Are you really telling me the truth now? Yes, I'm telling you the truth. This is like a recreation of what happened according to, you know, the source. Uh, yeah. Basically, they are doing an undercover. They're doing things to do with a new Twin Peaks project, but they don't want anyone to know. I saw Lynch in Snoqualmie, North Bend area. They're filming something. Um, I mean, that may be just a very small part of it. I don't know. But I've seen it and it's happening. Are you sure? Or are you saying this to me just as a you know, a rumour, that, or, you know, to try and start a rumour because you've heard something along the line and you're kind of inventing this. No, I'm absolutely certain on this for the second time. Absolutely happening. Can you just run this by me again? I mean, are you absolutely certain that you saw Lynch in that area and they're filming something? Yes. For the third time, I'm absolutely certain. I promise you, I'm not messing around uh, with you. I'm not playing with your ass. And uh, it's real, okay? Okay, I'm going to ask you just one more time. I want to quadruple down on this. So this is important to me, okay? This is not like all those other shows, you know, out there, like Touched by an Angel or Highway to Heaven or... Uh, only falls on horses. Like, for me, you know, Twin Peaks is a religion. Uh, and this is no offence to the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints or Catholics. 
I just want to say this means a lot to me. So can you please just give me absolute confirmation and we'll skin it to say that you saw this. And then and this person, they went, yes, let's skin it. And they, they did it like, skin it, bro. And then he slapped him really hard on the ass, I think, in my imagination anyway. So it's quadrupled. Quadrupled down on it. So I don't know if that's not enough for you, then I don't know what is really. Um, in terms of this person, what else they wrote, um, I'm definitely not doing that gallery. That's terrible. That's awful. It's, um, um, he said that the the whole thing, you know, fits in with the premise which Laura Dern was was putting out there, saying it will be kind of a mind bending, ass whooping, groundbreaking new thing from Lynch. Uh, i.e. like how they heralded the return, but uh, I would hope it would be different to that, personally. Um, and it's concerning the passage of time and something even ap apocalyptic. The things he heard were absolutely crazy, but then he didn't elaborate any more on that in his Reddit post. Um Like last night, you know, the idea of the passage of time that doesn't exactly sound that groundbreaking when you consider surely the return dealt with that kind of idea enough. But, and it, you know, and it could suggest that someone's just running their mouth here and, you know, needs needs a clip around the, the ear because they could have just been basically expanding upon what we've already seen and saying, well, this could happen. This could be apocalyptic, you know. Uh, they run out of cherry pie at the double R and uh, Ed because he's grieving over Norma, you know, takes a double barrel shotgun in there and starts blowing people's bodies apart with his with his shotgun, for instance. That's the opening scene. Um, <sighs> but I'm open-minded at the same time, so... I really don't know about that, Nathan. I, do, I, I think Cameron's had so many people helping out that like if Josh wanted to be on the soundtrack for Queen of Hearts, he probably should have, you know, really made sort of like some kind of um, big, big uh, display or, you know, a big uh, presentation to, uh, as such for Cameron to kind of get him on board. Because the th the trouble is Cameron was probably so overwhelmed with all the things he was doing. And, you know, Josh's work of soundtrack work is all quite more um, ambient and uh, very moody and uh, just like rich, ri like a rich, you know, biscuit base on a uh, when you're having like a cheesecake and you go through the soft cheesecake and you think mm, but don't you know don't be deceived by that then underneath there's this crispy biscuit bake that you have to like really chew on and take in that's what Josh's music is like sometimes it's kind of takes you by surprise a bit um, and I think you know with Josh he's he's mocked me openly saying that I want everything to have moogs on it or be synth laden uh, or be, you know, an eighties sort of parody. And that's not the case, even though I do like it, a lot of eighties music and soundtracks, etc. Uh, because I think they were sort of, I don't know, they were passionate, uh, even if they, it may have been done in a kind of a somewhat over the top way at the time or over polished etc but the actual intention behind it was genuine you know so we'll see i mean really you know if i if 
if Josh was soundtracking the entirety of Cameron's film, then I would say, well, then and that's going to be great. You know, that would be a great aspect of it. So, and I'm not pretending that I'm like sitting around listening to Josh's music uh, on Spotify or somewhere, wherever you can find it on Bandcamp all the time. But from what I know of it, and I did listen to his trio album, you know, on MP on my MP3 player and things like that. And so it would just be on random. And so, yeah, I did really enjoy some of it. Scott Matthew. Oh, thank you for your comment. Well, hello. I hope you're all right there, Scott. When you say our Instagram models, you mean because I posted the photos of me just casually, you know, in my kitchen, basically. That was because obviously I had that moment of uh, insight, but I feel like I was actually channeling something. Um, and some people say it's like a transcendent moment or a, you know, a religious moment. And uh, that's why I took those pictures, not as a, a, you know, me saying I'm a male model or something, even though if some people look at those photos and think, you know, this guy's could be a model. I'll click on this and read about what he's saying about Twin Peaks. Um, that's, you know, that's like bountiful. Um, it's like a double dose for them of wonderful, really. They're, and not only are they looking at my photo thinking, God, this guy, I would like to get married to him. Um, but, you know, then, wow he thinks that Twin Peaks is happening again based on just a feeling he had in his kitchen, but also some things he read on Reddit. Like, you know, I, I really want to not only marry this guy, but get it on, you know. And uh, I'm really, I mean, yeah, okay, I am basically just telling you what uh, Millie wrote to me in a message online on Facebook earlier this morning. And I was, you know, I was happy to receive it. Um, but there was just so many messages coming in from all around the world that uh, I, I I wouldn't say I was overwhelmed because I expected it. I expected this clamoring for more news of Twin Peaks because right now I just feel, you know, it's it's happening. Um, suddenly, you know, the boiler is heating up. And and I had another sign last night on the show where a guy was in the chat and he was saying that he knows somebody, a brother, who lives opposite where David Lynch lives, actually. And he saw Lynch handing out trick or treat. Um, sweet, well, sweets, I, pre I presume. And... Um, I just and it just made me feel like, uh, you know, I'm on the right track here. Um, I will actually. I did actually write to the guy on Reddit. I'll tell you what his name is in a minute. The, um, not Voltaire. His name is Jeff. Uh, the Reddit person. His his um, ID. Steph Steph says he saw David Lynch in a McDonald's in Woking. I find that entirely believable because from what I've heard whilst he was making The Elephant Man, um, David Lynch used to like going into the McDonald's in Wembley. And just, you know, have a probably a root beer then or something when they used to make root beer. They used to sell root beer in, in McDonald's in, in uh, the UK. Not anymore though. But it's interesting. You saw him in Woking. What, I mean, what would he be doing in that place in that area? I don't know anything about Woking, but um, I know it's not anywhere near Morecambe, for instance, but if I saw David Lynch in Morecambe, for instance, in the arcade, putting in two peas, you know, I'd go right up to him and said, say, you know, this is where you got the idea for Dougie gambling, isn't it? And he'd say, Buster, 
I sure did. You really have got an eye on the balls. And I'd say, yeah, I know, my eye's on the balls. Uh, thank you. What number are you going to um, come out with today? And he'd say, well, uh, you've got to watch the video later. I'll be uploading it. So, uh, yeah. And I'd say, well, the weather is really good today, isn't it? And he'd say, and if you can believe it, today is a Saturday. And I'd say, but no, you're not supposed to say it's Saturday. You're supposed to say it's Friday, aren't you? And he'd say, well, sorry, I just changed it up there and made it in something different on the spare of the moment. I'd say, well, that's that's what you're like, Lynch. You're mad. And he'd just like wink at me and then say, hey, if you want to party my next film, just, just ring me up, all right? And then hand me a card with his number on and everything. I'd be like, yeah. Hey, I'll be ringing you up pronto. And I've got a little lady you might like to meet by the name of Millet. Um, so I need to say, is she ready to go topless in her scene? Yes. She's in. Okay. Yeah, cheesecake is wonderful, uh, particularly if it's topless, I think. Um, did the news attract any new subscribers? It actually did. I had a few new subscribers last night, Gary. And I'm not making this up. This is no word of a lie. But this could be also because I uh, basically begged people in last night's video to, um, you know, subscribe and get involved so that um, potentially I've got more contact with them and can see that they've subscribed and things like that, just so that they keep involved with it. Hopefully see new videos come in the chat. And then this is often how we've had people come onto the show, really, from uh, them watching it in the first place. As I said, you know, on last night's video, it's, there's everything, every possibility, I mean, of, of looking out there and finding people from different online groups and things like this or on Instagram even but but really that's just like basically randomly you know finding people and uh, and as, a, as I was saying before you know th at this point they might think well why are they not talking always about Twin Peaks on here uh, you know they might not be watching lots of other things anyway etc and then also they might hear me suddenly just start saying about slapping people's asses or something or worse and think well i don't know about this it's uh if you know like voltaire says like if someone sees these videos then it's going to be uh it could hamper my daily life uh no that you know i mean when a, a, a sunday video now might get say 300 people seemingly watching it or clicking on it. I mean, okay, it's less than it used to be uh, when soon after the return, etc. But, and, you know, we've not got Josh, Chloe coming on much now. Um, as, as some might claim, I, I've driven them away, but that's, that's not true. Uh, well, and you know, it's not 100% true. And so, yeah, you know, it's a difficult situation. But on the other hand, I don't get it wrong, you know, that I'm just actually drumming up fake uh, hype or something like that just to try and create interest and get people involved with the show. Because, you know, I have an absolute back catalogue of people who could come on here. Um, don't, don't, you know... Don't doubt it. Um, <laughs> D 
Dan Peake says, I saw Lynch in a drainage ditch under a motorway near Derby. Well, that that is understandable. He's probably heard about my experiences with that kind of situation. Um, although it wasn't actually in Derby. It was about 10 miles away from Derby in Ripley, Derbyshire. Uh, so on the way to Derby, yes. Underneath the A38 motorway, which leads to bypass, which leads to Derby. Um, you know, and he's probably thinking this could be the subject of my next film or part of it. Yeah, this is actually another thing that was put out there into the um, ether as such or internet. Lynch teaching slow kids to ski in Whitefish, Montana. I don't know anything about the teaching children to ski, but um, he was seen in Whitefish, Montana, just probably, I don't know whether he has, has come out about this, but he's very much involved in uh, sort of CBD and smoking cannabis uh, legally, etc. And I think that's one of the a main place where people go to ski and then also smoke marijuana and cannabis or uh, edibles, etc. Take, you know, hallucin hallucination, hallucinatory aids, etc. And then ski, obviously. And Lynch himself has got into that a bit. I've heard anyway, so. Um, but he was genuinely supposed to be there. This is something which came from a, shall we say, an anonymous tip-off from somebody called MM, and I don't actually doubt it. It sounds pretty plausible to me. So um, if you want to look at the, the person I'm talking about on Reddit, you can find it. I'll just tell you about it. It's on the David Lynch forum. So just go to David Lynch, 21, 22,000 members nearly. Uh, and then just scroll down. It's down there somewhere. So is unrecorded night not happening anymore? 29 upvotes. Um, does anyone have any updates? Someone responded, Lynch won't talk about non-released stuff and neither will Netflix. So non-released, that doesn't seem like a, I'm not sure if that's a way of describing it. Um, and then it goes into the details from this um, person on there called sloppy underscore party bottom. That's sloppy underscore party bottom. And I think, you know, that name especially lends this rumor more credence. Like if I got, I did ask Voltaire about it and he said, this sounds legit based on just had a quick perusal of it. Um, But yeah, he goes into uh, same things I've mentioned, but uh, and then of course the fact that Lynch does the weather reports, he could just record these in advance for a week or something, and then just post them up every day. Well, Sabrina could for him, you know, she does it, I believe. So whilst he's not there, you know. Um, the good response from who'd rather not, who who wrote the who's replied with this. Um, David Lynch loves mystery, and David Lynch loves secrecy. I don't know if that's two different David Lynches, but and in today's age, if you want to surprise people with a secret as hard to keep as a major TV production. So if you, it means if you want to surprise people with a secret, as opposed to say, 
surprise people with something which is already known. Uh, that is another something that you can kind of do sometimes. Just a very well known fact or uh, just something that's happening. Sort of surprise people with an announced party, which you've already invited lots of people to. You can sometimes just surprise them with it by, in case maybe they forgot about it or something. Um, uh, anyway, if you want to surprise people with a hot secret as hard to keep as a major TV production, then uh, you know I would, I would like. I'm not really sure I would describe the Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks: The Return, or anything now from Twin Peaks in that world as being necessarily a major TV production as in uh, Game of Thrones, but it, it's more like a, probably, especially more now, uh, more like an independent TV production. But um, I know it would be probably linked to a major network, but anyway, then I'm sure some red herrings need to be dropped into the percolator. My hypothesis is this, he and his team have been fully working on something, maybe at a speed dictated by the pandemic, but at the same time, they are trying really hard to make everyone question what the F is going on altogether. That's exactly what I was thinking. I, and I think they, they've managed to do that. Like most people at the moment are literally, what the F is going on with Lynch and Sabrina, etc.? Uh, they're not doing anything, are they? They've just basically, there were rumors earlier this year, Twin Peaks stars were tweeting about Wisteria. Uh, you know, then we had the rumors about productions occurring and copyrighted scripts. Surely something must be happening. And then apparently May or June, it would start production, obviously with uh, restrictions due to covid but you know then we had nothing and then it seemed like it had all just fell through and gone down you know a drainage ditch in uh, derbyshire but instead it's all maybe being kept secret and i'd say they're succeeding when we get that first teaser shit will be running down our collective trousers like tears from the face of audrey horn as John Justice Wheeler readies his Learjet. So yeah, that ending part really made me think this person knows his shit, but also knows how to write uh, like Barbara Cartland or someone you know who writes great romantic fiction. I'll just repeat that. When we get that first teaser, Shit will be running down our collective trousers <laughs> like tears. <laughs> I mean, how can you how can you compare shit running down our collective trousers to tears from the face of Audrey Horn as John Justice Wheeler readies his Learjet? Oh dear me! You know, I was not really aware that in that scene that Audrey was that tears were really coming flowing from her face down her face or anything in that scene but and then sloppy party bottom responds with here's hoping friend here's hoping we get more david lynch okay beautifully put by those people Yeah, you saw David Lynch at a straight edge vegan punk gig in Bristol. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds plausible, actually. Thank you, Steph. Um, what vegan punk gig was it specifically? So I can I want to look up the music. So maybe because that could indicate that he's using that music in this new project, which is entirely plausible. I think he's gonna go. He's going to go for something more. Um, more harder and more, you know, ruthless for this new one. A bit like maybe the soundtrack to uh, Bad Lieutenant or something like that. But Shelley works. I don't know what you mean by that. Semper Compellis. 
I may have said something which you've uh, written to, but I'm... again, you know, everybody in the chat right now, Semper, Steph, Steph, uh, Otto, if you've not subscribed to Coffee Time, uh, at the moment I am asking people and will continue to, please um, subscribe and ring the bell because the primary way that people will come onto the show is through the chat and people who watch it as i've said before due to mainly reasons linked to the sort of reason why voltaire remains anonymous on the show and even though there are other people who have been in contact genuinely you know who make good youtube videos etc and they might might appear you know as one offs or just every now and again it's difficult to get people who genuinely understand the uh nature of of this show you know and um i'm sure you know that it, you probably could get more viewers if you knew how to go about it and uh things like that nowadays but at the same time I would. I think that would probably necessitate me having to change the name of the channel and make it into something completely different in at least uh, how it looks and how it's showcased. Then And then really it's just trying to wrap it up in a different uh, package, you know, pretty paper, uh, wrapping paper that isn't actually indicative of what it is. You know, if it became let's lay it coffee time, film and TV news, then in the end, it would probably end up losing subscribers because uh, the only people who are here are mainly interested in that kind of eccentric angle with Twin Peaks, etc. And uh, by appealing more to a sort of mainstream world that I'm not even that invested in, then it probably wouldn't work really. So, you know, and especially unless you're doing like something which is as as professionally made as um, other live community shows and, and shows like the ones Lorne does, for instance, Visited by Voices. Obviously, he specializes in horror and then say Region 3, they, it's very much horror based, but um, it's not... It's it's basically a bit definitely somewhat more uh, professional than this show. So oh, thank you, Otto Laerto. Are oh, you feel entertained? But thank you, you know, I mean if you can like and subscribe to Twin Peaks Coffee Time, then like I said, it just helps me keep getting you into the chat, but also keeping in touch and uh, hopefully some of you will be interested in actually coming on the videos. Thank you for the post uh, comment here, Gary. The rumors died around that production time frame. Uh, could be it's delayed or they're actually pulling it off in secret. Yeah. I, I really appreciate actually what you just said and the choice of words is delicate. It's it's delayed or they they're actually pulling it off in secret. Just the idea of them pulling it off in secret is like <laughs> basically like that. I could just hear my neighbour shouting again then, telling me uh, STFU. So, um, Hello there, Jamie. I hope you're all right. Good to see you, as always. And thank you for your uh, heart there. Sorry it took me about 10 minutes to get to your comment, but I had some very, very uh, unimportant things to say. All this talk of packages and bell ringing is getting me hot and bothered. Oh, well, that it was definitely not supposed to be in that, uh, you know, arena like porn or something. It's. I explained earlier that the Blue Rose magazine is not, you know, 
um, like a porn mag when there were suggestions being made that it was. But uh, let's just have another look at Millie's picture here. Or not picture, what the hell am I talking about? Um, there we go. There it is. Pete Martel standing by the dock of the bay. The pullout in the middle could be like a centerfold, I suppose, but it's not. Um, This is very curious, I must say. It genuinely looks like what you could imagine if they did a genuine, you know, Twin Peaks uh, reboot. But that, that wouldn't be something... I mean, I would definitely be interested in watching something like that, but at the same time... Can't really see it happening anyway, uh, unless Jennifer Lynch was involved and made it in a completely different way. And also, you'd have to change the whole story anyway. Because after all, it was a mystery, so you can't just have a mystery that people already know anyway, uh, the answer to. So It's not a secret, is it? So. Daniel Schlein, hello, and thank you for being in the chat. That's a beautiful picture of, and imagine it's not your actual self, but uh, some kind of werewolf. Not sure what film that is, but you could maybe uh, tell us if you know, which I'm sure you do. So, No, thanks, Jamie. I don't think, you know, I make this show anyway and never have really to try and uh be in competition with any kind of other Twin Peaks centered shows or obviously Cameron, you know, for instance, because I wouldn't even be making these videos if it wasn't for being on Cameron's show, you know. Um and there aren't really many other there aren't many other videos where people just casually talk about films and TV and then Twin Peaks, etc. Because and you know personal discussions so i appreciate that people enjoy it as well though you know <laughs> thank you daverin for the uh, twin peaks coffee time forever yeah i mean at certain points, I thought, right, I'm going to change this name to something else now. Uh, not like, obviously, James's great film time, you know, or James Woolley's film time with Voltaire and Josh and Jamie or whatever, or whoever was on. Uh, because then, you know, obviously it began as a Twin Peaks discussion. So to, to completely uh, change it into some other thing in, in name would be just downright... dishonest and uh, ridiculous and would just also not achieve anything. Because <laughs> I think really the way the way that um, the way that YouTube works is you have to be people want to watch things where they think generally that you're being serious about your uh, opinions and uh, presenting some kind of analysis of Twin Peaks, for instance. And I've never done videos where I've just made it, you know, ed edited it all together with me discussing various uh, opinions on the show. Because, as people said, I kept changing my opinions all the time anyway. And if I did that, that would probably happen again. And I think, I think people would be able to, 
quite easily to tell that I wasn't uh, very seriously invested in trying to make a um, make my case about something to do with Twin Peaks. The you know you know I think really in in honesty the I never watched Twin Peaks to try and make some kind of uh, or Lynch's films generally to make some kind of um, profound analysis or to to say this is what it's about because you know as Millie said in the chat I do tend to think it's quite reductive because you, you experience them more in a sense of how you experience life you know where it's a gradual thing and where sometimes it almost creeps up on you you know things can happen in daily life which can be they sort of pass you by in a way. And then uh, as time goes by, and this, this pandemic, for instance, has been a good example, I think. Uh, and same thing with related to, to grief and this kind of aspect, which I think relates to Twin Peaks. Um, the first, say, pilot, etc., of Twin Peaks, and obviously we all know it off the top of our heads, etc. now, and back to front, but it, it has that kind of, um, there's an excitement about it and an excitement in the community we're shown where it's about the discovery of um, Laura Palmer's body and Cooper coming to town. And it's not just filled with this feeling of just um, somberness or grief. I think that comes in maybe later on in the show particularly. Um, and this is more representative of how things can happen in real life. I, I do think, you know, even if it may be portrayed in a heightened fashion, for instance. And so, obviously, when the return came out or was being made, etc., people constantly thought, oh, right, they're going to have another crime that has to be solved or there has to be something which relates back to the Laura murder so we've got to have another body discovered somewhere and even to me I thought to myself when I was hearing about on set goings on I heard about the truck hitting hitting someone I didn't know if it was a child or what I, I heard that there was a woman uh crawling through the bush bushes and somebody said that some boy scouts find the, the body of a woman and that obviously was uh, misdirected it wasn't boy scouts it was the boys from the trailer park you know one of them mark frost's son in that scene and they find marion but um but she's you know she's not dead and i thought to myself right okay boy scouts this makes sense david lynch was an eagle scout you know they find a dead body of a woman this somehow relates back to the whole thing with Laura, even though obviously Leyland is no longer around, but not turning Twin Peaks into just standard sort of uh, like Mindhunter or a serial killer drama, but that could be one way of it being brought back. And then that would also create this same sense of some kind of excitement, I think, because obviously, even though serial killers and all this stuff is, is disturbing, we're also excited by it, I think, often in entertainment. And um, that was completely not the case anyway in, in how the return turned out. it didn't. We don't have another body turning up in Twin Peaks and Cooper going into the town to uh, investigate it after 25 years. Um, some argue that could have been actually a way of making the show more um, entertaining and accessible and enjoyable in terms of going back to the original feeling of the show perhaps more. Um, even though I would say, obviously, it sounds a bit unimaginative and almost cliched, but I think, you know, Twin Peaks could do an unimaginative cliched s script, but they could still turn it into something different. So in the end, it really doesn't actually matter how the script is. So too much.
coffee time did indeed bring us all together, Gary. And I'm glad to have you on board and in our chat. Uh, we've still not watched Doberman or the other Monica Bellucci film you suggested, which I don't, I forgot the name of, but uh, I know it's on YouTube. So those are genuine possibilities which we should think of doing over this winter season, you know, and maybe even a festive Monica Bellucci celebration or something, especially with her being in London town on the cobbles um, playing Maria Callas or something, isn't she? <laughs> and you, I presume, are going to go and see Monica, right? I know it's not going to be that cheap to go to these shows, but... <laughs> Daniel Schneid, the Waldenir Daniski werewolf films, Paul Nash. I've never seen those, but they sound interesting for sure. Um, Davrin mentions, according to James, is the only other title I could consider as a replacement. It's got history and that is important. Well, you know, as much as I agree with you, I think that that would be suitable for these videos where I'm on my own, obviously. But it is Cameron's title, and so he... It belongs to his channel more, but I certainly wouldn't t wouldn't put the whole channel being called that. That's way too like just centered on one person, um, and not everything com is according to me by any any such any um, any suggestion. Dark discussions, just a suggestion. <laughs> Well, you know, we're not doing. Then the th the trouble with that call is we would get people coming to the channel who maybe think that the whole thing is going to be us seriously debating a German quite serious show, you know, um, that's not on anymore. And I don't know if they're going to continue it in any way, shape, or form. But I imagine they don't want they don't they haven't planned on doing. I heard that they thought that that was definitely the end, but so the Voltaire and guest chat show. Yeah, I think that would be good because Voltaire is the most able to be a presenter in, in the sort of more appealing to American people, etc., And, uh, a lot of Americans might hear my voice and they think, oh, you know, what's the hell's he going on about? I can't understand it. Or, you know, th that limey bastard or something. But um, Voltaire, like, he demands more respect, generally. Thank you, Carl. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm not really joking about those aspects of, of how Twin Peaks The Return was because I think, as it turned out, um, the show is is entertaining to a degree, but at the same time, it doesn't have the rewatchability factor that the, the original show had. Uh, and that's because of its construction with essentially um, the return seems like pages from Lynch's notebook, you know, with that, that yellow paper he was writing on. And it's, it's essentially just a lot of different scenes uh, that don't actually connect to each other. Barely at all. And, you know, I would, I would argue that Inland Empire um, scene by scene, things connect together more in that, so it feels more cohesive generally. So, and one thing about uh, the return that I felt is that it has a playfulness and ability. It has a willingness to go into sort of 
uh, areas like, for instance, Dougie going out into the desert around Las Vegas and he's got the box. And then people online, they say, oh, you know, this is like a nod to the scene in Seven with the box, for instance, what's in the box and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, and gangsters. And I mean, that's... I suppose it, it, it could remind people of certain things. And, uh, and that aspect of it, I'm not really sure if it fully if it fully succeeded for me and if I even needed that. It's, I think like maybe in the writing, you can get to a point where uh, Lynch and Frost were coming up with ideas that were sort of, that maybe sounded pretty good on the page but then actually brought to the screen in the TV show that didn't necessarily fully succeed somehow, in my opinion. I think, I think for instance, the initial idea of Dougie being in, sorry, you know, Cooper being in a house in Las Vegas somehow, uh, which Mark Frost suggested, uh, is, is fine and everything and is good in terms of totally adrift from, you know, the whole world of Twin Peaks in this sort of almost like a different universe. And then uh, the things that Frost wrote into it, i.e. the street signs being Sycamore Street and so forth, that um, and Merlin's Market, or that I liked that aspect of it because at least it was giving a, a hint of the original sort of Glastonbury Grove aspect of things. <laughs> But obviously, where where things go off on a different tangent is when Lynch basically takes over everything, and it becomes a like just a series of dreams all put together. And so, um, so you know, dramatically speaking, or in terms of excitement, etc., this kind of thing that I was talking about, going back to the original pilot of Twin Peaks, and that sort of momentum that it had and mixed with emotional scenes, but also a humour, etc. I think probably that they were intending for those scenes to have a certain humour about them, like Dougie with the box of cherry pie, etc., and things like this. But it, um, but I feel like it, it didn't fully succeed on that level um, because you were just taking Dougie into different situations and it become it becomes just uh, wantonly absurd or or ridiculous. You know, like from the, first of all, you know, the fight scene with uh, Ike the Spike. So, yeah, when you... Uh, when you click on notifications, get notifications, Dharma's glasses, you actually need to um, click get all notifications as well. So, you know, just check on that aspect of it. So. Well, thanks again, anyway, Daniel, for the uh, suggestions. Anyway, I will leave it at that for tonight, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. So, thanks for tuning in for now, and I'll be seeing you all in the trees. All the best for now, lots of love, and cheerio.